right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to show you another example of induction, but this time with functions. Because analysis not only deals with numbers, but also with functions. So let's show this very neat result, namely that absolute value of sine of nx, it's always less than or equal to n absolute value of sine of x. In other words, this function in absolute value is always smaller than n times this function. So just to illustrate, for instance, the case n equals 3, what this is telling you is that absolute value of sine of 3x is less than or equal to 3 times absolute value of sine of x. And it turns out if you plot those functions, at least it looks true. Because what is 3 times absolute value of sine of x? Well, it looks like it's this huge bump that has zeros at multiples of pi, so at pi n. So it kind of looks like this. So just jumping up and down. Yeah. So this is 3 times absolute value of sine of x. Whereas what about this function? Well, it had zeros. It's not as big as sine of x, but it has zeros at multiples of pi over 3. So 3 times as many zeros, and maybe it looks something like that. Let me just see. Like this. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Etc., etc. So at least picture-wise, it looks correct. And in other words, this function is bigger than this one. But the point is, we would like to show this now. Now, I would like to see it. Um, and because it depends on n, it's a good idea of using induction to prove this. So, so again, what is the induction proof? It means you assume this is true. You fix n and you assume it's true for all x, and you show that it's true for the next one. So again, using a rigorous inductive format, let Pn be the proposition namely this thing, so absolute value of sine of nx it's less or equal to n absolute value of sine of x for all x. Again, you're fixing n and you're assuming it's true for all x. And what you have to show is that you assume it's true for n. You have to show it's true for n plus 1. And so first of all, let's do the base case. which in this case is, let's say, n equals 1, also true for n equals 0. But what does it say for n equals 1? It says, is it true or not that absolute value sine of 1x is less than or equal to 1 absolute value of sine of x? And indeed it is true. Absolute value of sine of x is less than or equal to absolute value of sine of x. So that's not a problem. What's more interesting is the inductive step. So suppose Pn is true. So that is, again, absolute value of sine of nx is less than or equal to n absolute value sine of x. And what you have to show, you have to show that Pn plus 1 is true. That is, again, sine of, again, n plus 1x. x is less than or equal to n plus 1 Hopefully it fits. Yeah. n plus 1 times absolute value of sine of x. And so it's very important. You're assuming this, but you're showing this. Okay. 
And let's see how to show it. Well, how would we expand out the n plus 1 in this n plus 1x? So, let's start. So, sine of n plus 1x. Okay, well, that's the same thing as sine of nx plus x. And somehow it would be nice to extract sine of nx from here, but indeed we can using the addition law for sine. So I'd like to remind you sine of a plus b, that's sine of a cosine b plus cosine a sine of b. So indeed, you can expand this out. So what do you get? That becomes absolute value of sine of nx. Again, some good news. And then cosine of x. And then plus cosine of nx sine of x. Okay, so that's very good. And now what we would like to do, we would like to extract this somehow from this uh, identity. So ideally what we would like to have, some inequality that involves the sine of nx. But notice the following, this is absolute value of a plus b. So it would be nice to somehow estimate the absolute value of a plus b, but indeed we can do that. It's something called the triangle inequality, and that's super important. So it's something we'll use, I, I won't even, like, it's not even a joke, we'll probably use it a hundred times in this course. Triangle inequality, which simply says the following, absolute value of a plus b, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. So it's almost a equality except it's less than or equal. And again, I want to emphasize how important this is. And what is this saying geometrically? Again, here's a picture, it's slightly wrong, but it's still useful for education if you want. Suppose you have a triangle with legs A and B, what this is saying is the length of the third leg is less than or equal to the sum of the first two legs. The sum of the lengths of the first two legs. So this length here is less than or equal to length of A plus length of B. So in some sense, that's what it's saying. And in fact, in terms of vectors, that is true. Because in terms of vectors, that's the vector A plus B. All right, and why is that important? Because now we can say this absolute value is less than or equal to the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this. So I'll, I'll erase this in a second, but let me just write it down like that. So, whoa. Uh, so this becomes less than or equal to the absolute value of this which is the same thing as sine of nx, absolute value, cosine of x, absolute value, plus cosine of nx, absolute value, and then sine of x, absolute value. But now, ding, 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 this is very good because now we can use our inductive hypothesis. So we know that this is, this junk here, it's less than or equal, to n sine of x. Well, this is already what we want, right? So this one, well, how can we estimate it? Well, cosine is between minus one and one, so absolute value of cosine is less than one. Okay. So already what we get, this is less or equal to n absolute value of sine of x. Well, and ideally what we would like to have here, it's another sine of x, because then we can combine it to get n plus one sine of x. But this is good, we already have this, so let's keep it. 
This one, let's literally pull this under the rug and just say, well, it's cosine of junk. So it's definitely less than or equal to one. So in the end, what we get is ab n absolute value of sine of x plus absolute value of sine of x. And if you compare this to what we've shown before, this in the end becomes what we want. So in the end, this equals to n plus 1 absolute value of sine of x. And therefore, we've shown that pn plus 1 is true. So pn is true. for all n. That is, again, I want to say, what did we have to show? We had to show that absolute value of sine of nx is less or equal to n absolute value of sine of x. And again, our box of victory, QED. And again, also quite interesting problem. Try it out for uh, cosine. See if it works or not. Well, Again, if you're my student, I think you have to try it out. But if you're just my viewer, check it out. It's quite interesting. Um, all right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.